po, grabe. Grabe, today is our season 2 finale. Si to Good morning, everyone! Good morning, good morning, good morning! Good morning, Ma'am Joy! Good morning! Hello po sa lahat! It's 10 o'clock! It's 10 o'clock! So, today po, grabe, grabe, today! is our season 2 finale. So ito na po ang aming last episode for season 2. We have been giving 14 online learning sessions po for you since season 1. So today po, okay, today we will end it with a bang! Yes, lahat po tayo no, nag a, -a eh nag-a-anticipate ano ba talaga uh, ang magiging direksyon no maging direksyon ng DepEd for this coming school year. Alright? So, now we will also be with a very vibrant and dynamic school leader. So, kahapon po, we had our SDS today. Alright? Are you ready? She's everyone's favorite in uh, in terms of showcasing her talent and being strong and vibrant here in the division of Cagayan de Oro. Mom Joy and Tech O'Clock, let's all welcome our uh, our DepEd Schools Division Assistant Superintendent of Cagayan de Oro, Dr. Alice E. Ang Hai. Good morning, Ma'am Alice. Good morning, Philippines. Thank you, Miss Mary. Welcome to another exciting, and if I may add, highly charged session of Tech O'Clock, considering the personality that will be joining us as our resource person. And uh, Tech O'Clock is brought to you by the division of Cagayan de Oro City. And so friends, uh, fellow educators, it is said that the true test of leadership is how well one functions in a crisis and demonstrates what's possible. A resource person is one such leader and we are highly privileged to have him with us at Tech O'Clock. He holds a PhD in education degree from the University of Newcastle, Australia. He is currently coordinating the ongoing review of the K-12 curriculum to find ways of ensuring that every learner achieves authentic literacy. He also pushes for transparency, ethics, and accountability in school governance. Our resource person believes that a strong rewards and recognition system is an effective way to encourage officials and teachers to aim for excellence. He strengthens a strong research culture towards meaningful innovations for learning and nurtures productive partnerships with all education stakeholders. 
Our resource person is at the core in laying out recommendations to mitigate against the possible negative impacts on children's learning and well-being. This means having solid plans in place to ensure the continuity of learning amid the pandemic, which is basically the meat of his talk this morning. Fellow educators, what our speaker has to present this morning is really valuable information because we have all been waiting for this. So I recommend you don't just listen to what he says. You get yourself a pen, get a notepad, and take notes. It will surely be worth it. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about learning continuity plan in the Department of Education, I am very much honored to present to you our Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Giusdado San Antonio. Hello, Yusek. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Paul. Good morning, Yusek. Good morning. Thank you very much, ASDS. And uh, good morning, fellow um, educators. Good morning, SDS Cherry. Uh, thank you, Mary and Joy, for joining me today. It's also a privilege to be a part of your effort to update our fellow teachers and other stakeholders about the things we wish to do uh, when the school year opens this coming 2020, 2021. Um, so today, I would be sharing um, significant highlights of our learning continuity plan uh, of the Department of Education. This was prepared um, by the department with um, close collaboration um, with our stakeholders, um, major stakeholders, uh, government leaders, um, industry leaders, and uh, internal stakeholders of the Department of Education. I'm also sharing the highlights of the most essential learning competencies that we hope we will use to anchor the lessons that we will organize for all learners um, this coming school year as well. Um, the most essential learning competencies uh, for K to 10, grade 10, is actually available now in our LR portal, and we hope to upload the uh, senior high school uh, most essential learning competencies very soon. We're still coding the uh, competencies we have identified. And after that, I'll share and discuss the multiple learning delivery modalities that the Department of Education will offer our learners and fellow teachers on um, this year. And uh, after that, I'll also highlight um, the kind of learning resources that we will use for our learners uh, this year. And then a few things about assessment and schedule the health standards the Department of Education will use so that um, indeed the learners and our fellow teachers and even the school officials will be safe. And uh, after that, I'll share a few tips uh, I have read from a very good author and a few things that I actually always remind people when I uh, have the chance to um discuss things so I'll, I'll be uh yeah uh that those are the things that we'll do today so um let's begin with the uh, basic education learning continuity plan um it's anchored on five principles i've already mentioned that uh, the learning continuity plan um has to be implemented bearing in mind these five principles and first and foremost is we will protect the health, safety, and well-being, not only of the learners, but our fellow teachers and even personnel. So we will not allow, we will not put to risk our fellow teachers, our learners, and even non-teaching personnel. And we will also be an instrument in the prevention of the further transmission of COVID-19. The second principle is, again, ensuring learning continuity. Our dear secretary, you know, leading Magdolis Briones always says, even before COVID-19, that learning has to continue. We have proven this in times of calamities and disasters, the Marawi cities, um, typhoons, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes. We made sure that learning would continue 
even if the physical you know classrooms are not um useful yet we are able to make adjustments so this is also exactly what we are going to do this year uh, there would be adjustments in the curriculum i said we have identified the most essential learning competencies we will align the learning materials we will implement multiple learning delivery modalities and we will provide corresponding teacher and parent training because we know and uh, we always um, emphasize this we cannot expect people to like prepare self-learning modules by just telling them prepare the activity sheets without capacitating people we feel that it's unfair to expect others to deliver things when you have not invested on the proper orientation and training of these people the third principle of our basic education learning continuity plan is the facilitation of the safe return of teaching and non-teaching personnel and learners to our work and our schools and we will base our decisions on the scenarios projected by the department of health and the iatf complemented by other credible sources and balanced by our own risk assessments as i've said everything we will do will be in observance of the guidelines being issued by the iatf the fourth principle of our basic education learning continuity plan is to be sensitive to equity considerations and concerns and endeavor to address them as best as we can it's always an issue even in our old ways of doing things the face-to-face -face classes uh, that the children of the middle class and the up you know the better off socioeconomically always have an advantage when it comes to uh, basic education or even other learning pursuits because they are you know they have access to um internet they they have uh, like their parents would even i would even uh joke that parents of the middle class including teachers the educated ones even if your child is just like one year old you want the child to already you know memorize the alphabet some some mothers and parents would even teach their children to count one to one thousand even while when the child is still in the womb that's an advantage of course when we talk about the children of the poorer class the working class those who have not been able to acquire higher levels of education they do not have stimulating work environment so we will be mindful of the equity considerations we know that if we just say online learning is the option many learners in public schools will not be able to benefit from that that's why we are offering other alternatives so that even the learners of poorer families who do not have gadgets will still be able to learn and finally what we are going to do during this um COVID-19 emergency is to continue to strengthen the pursuit of quality. You know, we will link and bridge this uh, learning continuity plan with our pivot to quality um, under the framework of Sulong Edukalidad. I'll share a few things about Sulong Edukalidad later in future thinking and education. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, Secretary Liling has organized a task force that has been looking at, you know, future thinking in education, looking at how education might be in the future, even again prior to COVID-19 emergency. The secretary has been really proactive and so wise to point out that um, there should be like efforts to make DepEd ready for whatever disruptions and um, scenarios, possible scenarios that may be created or happen um, in the future. So let me now proceed with our most essential learning competencies. Of course, this the, the effort to produce the most essential learning competencies, the most important requirement, if we streamline the curriculum, the first thing we have to do is to identify the most essential learning competencies. And I thank Director Joyce Andaya for uh, leading the team that produced this, that delivered the required uh, most essential learning competencies. Friends, we still, when we identified all the learning competencies we have now are found in our K-12 curriculum guide. 
the the one with so many lists of the curriculum standards etc are found there we just had to identify if identify the essential the most essential one and last year as you know uh, as mentioned by asds alice um we my task is really to review the curriculum and we are in the midst of reviewing the curriculum and the review has four phases the first phase was to look at the intended curriculum meaning the things found in our curriculum guide and findings are very clear first the, the standards we have identified the learning competencies are comparable with anything you find around the world so it's also world class but as to the issue of congestion it was also in the during the review of the intended curriculum indeed this is still very congested it, we attempt to cover so many learning competencies that cannot be done uh, under our normal you know uh, number of school days that we have so we were in 2019 last year we were already starting to identify the essential learning competencies in our effort to streamline indeed the curriculum after looking at the intended curriculum the review will also include looking at how our fellow teachers are, or our schools are able to implement the curriculum so we will look at the implemented curriculum and after looking at the implemented curriculum which is going on now we will also take a look at the in the tested curriculum ano ba yung mga test among the learning competencies and finally we will the final phase is the uh, determination of whether the curriculum actually is indeed achieved and hope before June 2022, when our term ends, we'll be able to offer the enhanced um, basic education curriculum for the Philippines out of that. So um, what do we mean when we say essential learning competencies? They are the competencies that a learner needs for continuation to subsequent grades and ultimately for a successful life. So any competence, any skill, kaalaman, kasanayan, that a person needs a susunod na grado is considered an essential learning competency. There are five characteristics, as you can see on the slide. By the way, uh ASDS natin, I mag take note. I suggest you just ask the organizers, Mary and the team, to send you the presentation. I'm going to share with them the presentation. Uh, um, just ask from them. First. The competency is essential if it's aligned with the national standards or frameworks. For example, we, we want holistic Filipino learners with 21st century skills as our output. So anything has to contribute in creating holistic Filipino learners with, with the 21st century skills. Pangalawa, they connect the content to higher concepts across content areas. So yung sinasabi mo sa competency, that will connect it to higher concepts later on. They are applicable to real-life situations. Of course, any competence that will not have significance or relevance to our lives will not be um, you know, attractive to learn. Pang-apat, uh, they are important for students to acquire even if a student leaves school at a particular grade level. So, kailangan atan niya yan kasi kahit umulis siya, the child will still have some competence for, you know, living in this world and the final um is, is normally you do not expect it to be ordinarily learned by the students if not taught in the school so hindi ituro hindi siya matututunan basta basta so more on the most essential learning competencies as you can see in this slide um the mm -hmm. We have reduced the competencies from 14,000 plus to 5,600 something or 60% reduction. So, as I've said, addressing the findings that there is congestion, congestion and overlaps in certain learning areas in terms of the competencies. Sa isang slide, parang ganyan din, just to show in, in like percentages, you will note that uh, we have retained all the essential learning competencies or the learning competencies and in our curriculum guide in our uh, sports track at the uh, senior high school walang inalis but you will also know 
um, 93% of the English learning competencies have been uh, removed. So, ang natira na lang 7%. So, that it varies depending on, as again, on the criteria or the criteria on which we have used. What is that? Endurance. So, nung ginagawa ng team ni Director Joyce, ang most essential learning competencies, ang tanong, tinatanong nila sa bawat learning competence na nandyan sa ating curriculum guide, um, enduring, enduring ba itong learning competence na ito? And what do we mean when we say enduring? When we say enduring, it's a competence, a skill, knowledge, um, that remains with learners long after a test or unit of study is completed or if it is useful beyond a single test or unit of study. Alam niyo naman, we have all been students ourselves. And in most of the things we have learned, we're just learned for the sake of the examination. And then after that, we forgot. So um, that's not um, an essential learning competence. An essential learning competence is enduring, useful after the examinations. And examples, research skills, reading comprehension, writing, map reading, hypothesis testing. Kahit tapos na yung test, kailangan mo pa rin ang research skills. Kailangan mo pa rin maintindihan yung binabasa mo, marunong ka magsulat, nakaka-interpret ka ng mapa. You know how to test hypothesis. You do not just, you know, jump into conclusions without actually gathering data. Things like this are examples of uh, enduring learning competencies. Let's proceed with the decisions tools. Paano? Paano? Basta na lang ba? Ah, pumikit ng mata yung natamaan ng ballpen yun na yun. Hindi. There were <coughs> considerations under the endurance. Ang mga ginawa, some we retain when the competence satisfies the endurance criterion, retain siya, which, great, which greatly contributes to lifelong learning and is a prerequisite skill to the next grade. Some competences were merged or clustered. Clustered. In cases where two or more learning competencies have the same objective or learning intention, so they can be combined into one comprehensive learning competency. And we also remove, as you, as you have learned earlier, may mga inalis, drop, due to the following reasons. Ano yung mga dahilan? Bakit inalis? They are too specific, similar na sa appropriate to be introduced in an earlier quarter or grade level or move to a later quarter or grade level. So inalis muna doon kung saan siya nakalagay. They are recurring pa ulit-ulit. They are subsumed in another learning competence. So yung apat na situations na yan uh, told us we have to remove. And there were also competences we rephrased so that we would be more concise in in our um, most essential list, list of most essential learning competencies. Example, ng merge, hindi ko na ito i-explain isa-isa. Diba, sa English 4, may note details in a literary text listen to, note details in a selection listen to, note de details by asking, answering questions about a story point listen to, note significant details in a literary text. Sin Inisan na lang natin, when we merge, then we just said, note significant details of various text types. And then may justification tayo dyan. Hindi ko na siya ipapaliwanag. But just to show you that the, the work, the, the effort in producing the most essential learning competencies had to go through this, may mga dinilit, and then there was a justification for every competence that has been deleted. Mayroon din yan sa science, yung mga na merge, na drop, na retain, and uh, the new milks, and at the same time, the reasons are also there. I'm not going to explain them uh, more, I mean, anymore, you can take a look at the details of the slide later when you receive it from uh, Miss Mary or from the division office. Also, for mathematics, we also identified retained, uh, drop, and merge competencies. And finally, for Araling Pandipunan, mayroon din tayong example, and, and even in other learning areas. So, ang pinapaliwanag ko lang sa inyo mga fellow teachers na uh, may mga basihan yung mga nilagay dyan. Of course, I would like also to emphasize that the most essential learning competencies are just like the minimum anchor. If you feel, and ba, yung supervisors natin, yung mga master teachers, the principals, if you feel that there's a need 
to, to supplement, to again take back a few uh, items in our curriculum guide that will help you um, make sure that the milks will be accomplished. We will not prohibit. We will allow you to actually enhance or supplement it with some of those learning competencies that are already in our uh, curriculum guide, na in a list or the merch or what. That's okay with us. You're completely given the freedom, I mean, the authority to, to do that. So uh, the next thing that I am sharing is essentially on our learning delivery modalities. I think you've heard this, Apachan and face to face. The teachers and learners are physically in one venue. Usually, yung dating nakikiginagawa natin, face to face, pupunta sa school yung bata, magtuturo si teacher, magpapacilitate ng learning using different uh, teaching strategies and approaches. Yung pangalawa natin is distance learning. Ano yan? Learner is given materials or access to resources or he or she and he or she undertakes self-directed study at home or in another learning space. Yan ang sinasabi natin, the distance learning. The, ano yan? Meron tayong online distance learning. You use various technologies connected to the internet, which could be synchronous or asynchronous. Pag online distance, pwede kang... Pag sinabi natin synchronous sabay-sabay, katulad ngayon, lahat tayo nag sabay-sabay nag-uusan. I mean, nakatingin dito sa aking mga pinagsasasabi that's synchronous. Later, kung isi-share ito somewhere ng uh, DepEd CDO, at gustong tingnan ng ibang hindi nakapanood, that's no longer synchronous. That's a, an asynchronous form of viewing a video or a lesson. And that's, that can be done in the online distance learning mode. Let me clarify this, fellow teachers. When we talk about distance learning, it's not just the internet. It's not just online. It can also be modular distance learning. When we say modular, we use self modules, either printed or digital. So, pwede rin kasi, yung printed, yung alam na alam natin yan, uh, kami mga matatanda na, uh, nang lumabas yung mga modules, pinapadala sa amin yung self-learning modules na yan, printed, doon kami nag-aaral. We will still make the available, and I feel that that's something that perhaps even in your division, kahit city kayo, there would be many schools na mas mga kailangan ng self-learning modules na inimprinta. In but there are also areas na pwede kang may laptop pero wala kang internet. So what do you do? Save the learning resources available, digital learning resources in a flash drive or in your budget and open the learning resources at home without access to the internet. That is still considered modular distance learning. I have highlighted another uh, way to actually um, do distance learning. You can do online and modular you can also supplement or use educational TV and radio-based instruction. What we're doing now is the Bureau of Learning Delivery, na namumuno ni Director Lai Ar Ariola, sila yung mga nag-design ito, mga di learning delivery modalities na ito, sila nag-propose and we, we discussed uh, ways to uh, make it clearer to, to everybody who will use. Ang sinasabi natin, the learning resources will be converted, mamaya sasabihin ko pa yan, but I'm saying it, will be converted into the printed interactive versions na, na gagawing available online through our DepEd Commons. And we are very fortunate that the Office of USEC, Alain Pasqua, and uh, Director Abram Abanil have offered uh, us the digital platform for those who have access to the internet. Like most of you now, you can... Uh, from the DepEd Commons and again use our um, older but still reliable LR portal, our learning resources portal. As I mentioned, I think earlier today, the most essential is for kindergarten to grade 10 is already available in our LR portal. <laughs> MELC's most essential learning competencies, we will upload hopefully. Uh, before the end of this week. So, tatlo yan. Tapos, then, pag nagbasa ka ng, some of you are also reading things, will discover that there are different you know, forms of blended learning. Pero sa DepEd, we are proposing four 
forms a blended learning. Ano yan? When we say blended, as far as the Department of Education is concerned, our country is concerned. When we say blended, it's a learning delivery modality using a combination, the features of face-to-face -face and um, distance learning. So, pag binagalo mo si distance and face-to-face -face learning, you will be doing blended learning. And ano yun? Pwede online distance plus face-to-face, -face, online um, modular distance learning plus face-to-face, face-to-face uh, -face with TV and uh, radio-based instruction or face-to-face, -face, tapos hinalo-halo mo yung may, may online, may, may printed, may TV pa. So parang chop soy. Ano. So maganda. Mamaya may isang slide pa ako to actually guide you kung ano ang pinaka-best suited for the learners in your areas. And the other alternative is a complete option to homeschool the child. So, uh, pwede po, um, ginagawa na ito, um, pero usually dati ang gumagawa nito, yung mga few parents na takot na ilagay sa school ang mga anak nila, so hino homeschool. We are about to also release a policy that will authorize Um, the Department of Education discovers schools, a few schools in the country to offer homeschooling as an option. And um, homeschooling naman is essentially a form of distance learning. But it's also possible that homeschooling may be blended. Ano? Uulitin ko, yung blended can only be done in areas na pinapayagan ng IATF na magbukas ang mga paaralan. Pag hindi pinapayagan, talagang ang option lang natin is distance learning. So, mayroon ako dito ang algorithm, parang a short guide on how, ano, medyo maliliit yung, ano, tinulungan ako nito ng ASDS sa, sa Cavite. Um, it's still being refined, but uh, for now, the, this is the version. But pinapakita yung mga paano ka pipili. Ang tanong mo, ligtas bang pumunta sa lumabas ng bahay ang mga anak o ang mga teachers? O ang sagot mo, oo, oh, oh, kung ligtas. Walang COVID dyan for since January, wala pa kayong COVID sa barangay na yan. At malapit ba ang bahay mo sa paaralan? At ang sagot mo ay oo, well, face-to-face -face ka. Pero kung ang sagot mo ay hindi, hindi ligtas, so pupunta ka dun, tatanungin mo ang, ang sarili mo. Mayroon ka bang laptop, etc., mga gagamitin? Kasi kung mayroon, di pwede kang, uh, at paminsan-minsan, yung, yung isang tanong dyan ay, mayroon pa kayong internet? So kung mayroon, pwede kang mag-online distance learning. Kung paminsan-minsan lang, di online asynchronous learning ang gagamitin mo. Kung wala ka naman, pero mayroon kang laptop, wala kang internet, pwede mo pa rin yung digital uh, offline modular learning. Yan ang sinasabi. At kung, kung wala kang gadgets, mayroon bang taong pwedeng tumulong sa bahay mo para matuto yung bata? Pag oo, pwede mong gamitin yung home-based uh, print modular learning. Or kung kaya mag-aral ng sarili mga anak, mas maganda. And finally, sa homeschooling, ang magulang o oh, tutor, sabihin natin, siya ang facilitator ng learning. Ano ang magiging paraan ng pagtuturo ng magulang? Yan pa rin, sa homeschooling, pwedeng home-based, pwedeng may TV pa, pwedeng digital, at lahat-lahat. So pinapakita dito, parang to guide you, para malagay sa ating isip, paano, ano yung mga dapat tinatanong natin para makapag-determine kung ano yung most appropriate learning delivery modality for your own area. Uh, I think narinig na natin sa si secretary, sinasabi niya, it's not DepEd that will tell what is going to be implemented in that particular school. It's the school that will select what kind of learning delivery modality that you will have in your own areas. Sabi ito, itong slide na ito, uh, nandiyan pa si ma'am. Ano, regions, divisions, and schools will contextualize learning strategies and learning delivery modalities. Our schools, under the supervision and guidance of our regions and divisions, are authorized to decide on the specific learning delivery modalities deemed appropriate in their context and consistent with COVID-19 guidelines and regulations. Ano. Ayun po ito sa isang slide ni Ma'am Liling, hiniram ko, just to emphasize na kayo ang may kapangyarihan, kayo ang mamimili. Sabi ni Ma'am Liling, we have great trust in our field officials, school leaders, and teachers in their resilience, adaptability, 
resourcefulness in delivering instruction. Naniniwala po si Ma'am Diling na ang mga mga kapwa natin guro, mga kapwa natin namumuno sa mga paaralan, may kakayahang maging resilient, adaptable, resourceful sa pagdi-deliver ng learning sa ating mga bata. Pili, ito lang po, hindi pa po ito final, but I'm sharing. Halimbawa, kung mag-distance learning kayo online, may mga hanapin ang, siyempre, magtatanong kayo, anong kailangan mapakita naming prueba na, na capable kami of delivering online distance learning? So, mayroon kami inihandang mga checklist o mga itatanong. Una, kailangan may certification yung paaralan na mayroon kayong IT infrastructure with technology support so that may, may internet service provider kayo, may web hosting service provider, may technical support for learners and other users. Mayroon pang sariling learning management system na pwedeng kayo ang gumawa or in-outsource nyo. Pero yun po ang isang kailangan para makapag-offer tayo ng online distance learning. Pangalawa, Ilalagay mo rin yung mga essential e-learning applications na kailangan. MS-365 ba yan? May Moodle ba kayo? Google Suite for education and other um, other things which can be developed locally or outsourced. Pangatlo, uh, sa mga ngako kayo na ang mga courseware sa bawat learning area ay ready na for use the coming school year. Sunod, kailangan ding sabihin nyo, na accessible ang e-learning platform sa mga gagamit, administrators, teachers, learners. Pang lima, kailangan i-discuss nyo o ipaliwanan how the curricula will be implemented, including how you comply with the many most essential learning competencies we have identified, time allotment, assessment of learning, and promotion and retention, especially for private schools, itong, itong pang limang ito. At sa private school din, siyempre itatanungin, nag-uusap ba kayo ng mga magulang tungkol sa tuition fee? At tapos, Certificate of Compliance na iniisan na nagsusunod kayo sa mga sinasabi ng DepEd in terms of online learning. May checklist po yan. Actually, 14 things ang, that, ang para mapatunayan yung mga nasabi ko kanina. May checklist. Inorient nyo ba ang teachers, parents, and learners for the online learning policies and directions so that everybody will know? Ano ba kayo? May, sabi ko kanina, may learning management system. Mayroon ba kayong technical expertise? Mayroon ba kayong email facility? Kasi if you're adapting online distance learning, you should be able to to actually uh, um, yeah to to actually communicate with your parents online. Uh, ano pa? Uh, may help desk na para tumulong pag may nagtatanong. How can I connect? How, how do I submit my requirements, etc.? May sasagot. The school has technology knowledge enhancement program wherein the parents and teachers are able to attend seminars. Ano ba, may complete and appropriate content na kayo for quarter one. Yan din ang requirement. Dapat kompleto na yung mga ilalagay niyo dyan sa online for quarter one. Tapos, uh, may, may mga assessment ba kayong nilagay dun sa platform nyo? May training and updating din kayo sa teachers for, their, for them to be more technologically adept. Kasi ang hirap kung hindi naman tayo mismo mga teachers hindi marunong, kasi mahirapan yan. And syempre, napaka-basic. May access ba yung mga fellow teachers mo? O mga te fellow teachers natin? And connected ba siya? May internet ba siya? Mayroon ba siya? Well-oriented ba ang mga teachers sa policies ng DepEd relative to online education? At kung paano nagamitin ang LR portal at ang DepEd Commons. And um, ang parents ba ay willing? Kasi kailangan uh, gusto ng parents. Willing ba ang parents na mag-online distance learning ang mga anak nila? Sila ba ay willing din mag-co-supervise tumulong sa pag-facilitate ng learning sa bahay o mag-assign ng isang tao na gagawa nito? And finally, syempre, pinaka-importante din. Ang mga learners ba may access sa necessary resources, device, connectivity, para ma-access yung mga lessons. So, online distance learning yan. Yung susunod, modular. Medyo hindi kasing dami kasi hindi naman kailangan yung mga technology, mga gadgets. Ganun pa rin, mag-promise, mag mag-undertake na ang mga materials ay ready na. Sa private school, may mga dagdag na hanapin, hindi ko naiisa-isahin. May checklist dun po yan, orientation, appropriate and complete contents na naka-imprint or in digital format for the first quarter. May mga supplementary materials. Willing si parent at na mag, mag, um, magkaroon ng modular distance learning ang anak nila at willing din tumulong sa pagpapatuto. This is one thing I will emphasize fellow teachers and school officials. 
So new normal, so DepEd, the role of the parents will be uh, different. They will have to actually have a stronger, take a stronger part in supervising the learning activities of their own children because marami tayong home-based learning activities na mangyayari. Pag TV naman, uh, kailangan may ka kausap pa yung TV or radio station. We are trying very hard. In fact, uh, bukas yata or the next day, may meeting kami with Bang Liling and Secretary Andanar to actually discuss how um, our government uh, TV channels and radio um, stations may be used uh, during uh, ano, uh, this school year, especially for the distance learning mode na kasama yung TV and radio. And then, uh, sasabihin din ng mga pa-principal na mayroon silang mga video materials or material, but we are also helping. We will convert, sabi ko, the self-learning modules, we will convert them into radio or TV scripts na pwedeng gamitin ng mga school officials when they have um, you know collaborations with their own um, local stations for use uh, as a support for the learning activities happening. Kung private schools may mga dagdag na hanapin. At ito yung checklist, yun nga, uh, dapat oriented si teacher, parent, learner, kung paano ginagawa yung TV and radio is broadcast, tapos may, M, may random agreement, ang DepEd o ang school sa mga TV at radio stations, mayroong materials, modules, mayroong references, may, um, may siyempre, sasabihin din ng parents, oh, may TV kami o oh, may radio, uh, willing din silang tumulong at willing silang mag, uh, mag-supervise ng mga inaaral ng mga anak nila. Tapos kung homeschooling, ito, sabi ko, these requirements are not yet final, mga initial discussions namin ito, but I'm just giving you an idea kung ano yung mga posibleng hahanapin for you to be able to implement the specific learning delivery modality that may be uh, implemented in your own school. So kung homeschooling, kailangan dito ang, ang principal na gustong magpa, mag-offer ng homeschooling, magsusulat sa regional office, uh, magsasubmit siya ng implementation plan, uh, kasama kung sino yung mga learners doon, um, mag-assign mag kayo ng homeschool coordinator submit ng training plan, paano mo iti-train yung mga parents ng mga homeschooling learners at uh, magsisertify na mayroon kayong mga materials for use to deliver homeschooling. Dito na tayo sa learning resources. Alam nyo naman to, hindi, hindi ko na to kailangan yung isa-isahin, but I think it's very obvious by now that the, parang the most basic learning resource, in addition to the textbooks, the Ang iba nga, wala pa tayo. But yung mga mayroon na, we will still use them. But ang gagamitin talaga natin na iniahanda na ngayon ng mga division offices and regional offices, I know, around the country, hinati-hati natin yan. And we imagine the whole DepEd will be able to provide at least one. Pero hindi natin binabawalan yung iba na gumawa ng, ng marami o ng dagdag pan sa kanila. They can contextualize the self-learning modules that are being develop now. The regional directors promised our office that they will submit before the end of this week so that next week we can already circulate uh, the self-learning modules that have been prepared and the teachers, kung magtatrabaho na tayo next week, will prepare, will study the self-learning modules, will prepare learning activity sheets, will prepare the weekly plans, Personally, pag tinanong nyo ako, may DLL pa ba? Days, daily lesson log? For this time of emergency, mukhang hindi muna. Baka weekly na lang muna ang, ang planning ng lessons natin. Kasi nga, if it's going to be blended in areas na pinampayagang magkita si teacher at ang mga bata, eh, sa isang week, hindi mo naman palaging makikita yung mga anak. Pwede once or twice lang pumunta sa school yung mga bata. Tapos uh, the rest of the week, doon maghahanda ang teacher simula nga ngayong June, hopefully, hanggang bago magbukas ang pasukan ng mga learning activity sheets na magiging assignment ng mga bata. So essentially, if you ask me, ano ang learning resource, pinaka-primary learning resource that we will use, the self-learning modules, whether printed in digital format or even through interactive videos. Ang, ang all we do is um, yeah, supplement this with activity sheets or drills, exercises, or strategic intervention materials, whatever you call them, but uh, yun na yun yung mga 
gagawin ng mga estudyante natin habang sila ay nasa bahay. Of course, the learning resources are the development, as I've said, will be an effort of everybody. Uh, Nag-iisang hago sabi ko, preferably supervisors and specialists and master teachers, yung fellow teachers natin, huwag na muna. And the uh, LR Bureau, uh, si Director Idel Karag, has been busy uh, coming up with schemes on how we can quality assure the learning resources. Now, let's talk about the national assessments. Ang proposal ng Bureau of Education Assessment under the leadership of uh, able leadership of Director Nelia Benito, ay magkakaroon pa rin tayo ng national assessments. Pero depende rin sa risk area ng mga lugar. Ano, kung very low ang risk area, we'll administer the examinations NAT 6, 10, 12, LNA, PEPP, Accreditation and Equivalency, and NKI. Um, and, but only 10 to 15 students per testing room will be allowed. Because we'll have to practice social distancing inside and outside the testing room. Sa low risk areas, ganun pa rin, similar pa rin siya, pero by batch ang, ang pagpatest para masigurong mayroon talagang social distancing. High risk areas, yung mga, may mga quarantine-quarantine pa, online assessment lang ang not grade 6, 10, and 12 using the platform we are developing now uh, with the assistance of the ICTS under Director M. Abram Abanil. And we'll just have samples. It's not going to be the census type examination that we normally do in areas where the risk of the COVID-19 is very high. Now, let's, let me share the key elements of the DepEd Health Standards. Una, we have to increase physical and mental resilience. And so we will continue school-based school feeding program. We'll educate uh, our learners uh, and advocate for nutrition and health, mental health interventions. Uh, the, the week prior to the formal opening, we will make sure that there's a psychological uh, uh, first aid for uh, teachers and learners so that they will be ready to learn na. Ano. Vitamins and minerals, hopefully, we will be able to provide and so we will support the teachers and personnel. Pangalawang element ng ating Death and Health Standards is about reducing the transmission of the virus by uh, making sure that the school is ready. We'll have some standards to be issued very soon. Respiratory and hand hygiene. I think alam na natin by now that the best way to protect ourselves from the virus is to do frequent hand washing. Don't go out without masks. Uh, and then regular disinfection. We will monitor the teachers. So may mga symptoms, we'll have to uh, provide them the appropriate um, interventions, students and teachers na may mga symptoms will definitely not be allowed to be in school. Health and safety standards are not only going to be in the school but at home and while traveling as well. The third element is reducing contact and that's the reason why we'll do physical distancing at work, classrooms and travel. So we will reduce the class size, maximum of 20, kung allowed na pumunta sa school. We will, as I've said, implement multimodal delivery of instruction. We will do alternative work arrangements. So teachers na may, na palagay nila high risk sila can say, uh, I will volunteer to, the, to work from home, perhaps facilitate this distance learning, etc. We'll also make sure that classrooms are when ventilated. We will cancel all activities that involve large congregation of learners unless we can do them online. So, wala muna mga major activities, mga school programs, etc. We will also reduce duration of infection as another element by te observing testing protocol in coordination with local government units, internal contract tracing. So, aalamin, sin si kasama nito at lahat, at availability of PPEs for emergency situations and pre-agreed referral system for symptomatic patients. We'll have that. And then the other thing is we'll, we'll have, we have a DepEd Task Force on COVID-19, we will continue to communicate and we will come up with our own ways of monitoring internally. So friends, sabi ko kanina, this learning continuity plan is anchored on Sulong Edukalidad. For those who are not yet aware, there is this four pillars of the Sulong Edukalidad captured in an acronym KITE. And what is KITE? K is for K-12 curriculum review and updating. I is for improving the learning environment. T is for teachers and school officials upskilling and reskilling. And E is for engagement of stakeholders 
for support and collaboration. So we will not, we will continue to pay attention to the curriculum review, improvement of the learning environment, teachers updating and upscaling, perhaps using lab sessions in more creative ways, and we will continue to engage our stakeholders. Sabi ko kanina, I'll share some, a few things towards the end of this talk, a few things about what I've read lately. Ano, ito, favorite ko yan si Jay Maktai. At uh, kasama niya si Giselle Martin Neep. Um, in a blog, they they uh, wrote uh, on May 12. Um, kailan, lang, kailan lang to? Seven strategies for supporting student learning in a remote environment. So, mag distance learning tayo. How are we going to support the students? First, we'll have to focus on worthy goals and meaningful learning. So, siguruhin na uh, you know, the most essential learning competencies we imagine are the worthiest goals and uh, perhaps instruments for meaningful learning. Pangalawa, we will specify the task directions and success criteria. We will be very clear. Ano ba ang mas, ma, maipakikita mo para mapatunayan natin kung ano na araw? Pangatlo, we will provide different support and encourage students' choice and voice. Again, yung sabi ko, the different learning modalities that the learners will choose has to be significantly affected by their own preferences. Sabi natin, naririnig natin nung time namin, differentiated instruction, pero sabi ngayon ng mga researchers, personalizing learning. So we will provide support in different ways. Yung mga bata na independent learners na they will not need so much support. So, yung mga batang struggling readers, kailangan, kailangan mag, medyo magbagal, they are the ones perhaps that will need to be visited at home kung, kung kailangan ano, by the teacher during the days that home-based learning is happening. I know some of you will say, ang dami palang gagawin, but I am very confident. I know many highly committed fellow teachers who really will not stop until every learner is served properly. And I would like to believe sa CDO, mas marami yung ganun. Pang-apat, we should provide feedback along the way. That's why may mga checkpoints. And we will, pang lima nga is, students can do self-assessment and reflection and goal setting themselves. We have to teach them how to identify goals for learning themselves para driven talaga sila. And then, pang-anim, and this is what we're doing, yung classroom assessment and grading we are reviewing now because we, we cannot use the grading and assessment systems that we have now in place, which was applicable in the pre-COVID-19 times. We have to perhaps make more use of portfolios. Sinasabi ko, baka meaningful. Uh, i-consider nyo, I think this should be a practice in all schools. Mayroong reflection journal. May, may journal yung mga bata reflecting on what they learn every day and perhaps challenging them to actually write and discuss how those things they are learning every day are relevant to their lives or to their future later on. And finally, kasi palaging tinatanong to, sabi ni James, uh, ni Jay Maktai, tama, there should be an honor code that applauds from the students and parents that they will submit outputs that are the work of the students. Kasi parang may nagtatanong, are you sure pag nagpa-online test ka that is the learner providing the answer? Sinong niloloko natin? Ano, I-remind natin yung mga kapwa natin, mga magulang, kung ikaw ang magbibigay ng sagot sa mga test ng mga anak mo. Sinong niloloko mo? Maaari mong tulungan how to find the answer. But doing the, the like kung napasulat ka ng essay, ay ikaw na magsusulat, that is not allowed. Perhaps kung tutulungan mo lang i-improve, sabihin mo, kulang itong nilagay mo dyan, uh, dagdagan natin, I will tolerate that. But the honor code I'm referring to is just to make sure that the portfolios, the outputs that the students will show us, fellow teachers, are really outputs primarily, mainly done by the learners. Isishare ko rin sa inyo yung actually ginawa namin sa Calabar Stone when I was regional director. We did our research on how we can be more focused on learning. Sa totoo lang, yung mga hindi, yung mga officials yan, mga principal, supervisors, lalo na yung mga principals, 
we tend to do a lot of other things. We forget. Kasi ang dami mag-delicate ng MOE, may mga meeting kung saan-saan, palaging may manco meeting at lahat. We forget that our work is about making sure that learning will happen. Kaya nga, di ba, yung plano natin sa DepEd, learning continuity plan. So, while there are standards for school officials, we felt in Calabarzon, but I'm sharing this now, kasi hindi na lang Calabarzon ang, ang area ko, we, we did this research where we develop a framework that leaders that will focus on learning. So, ang tawag namin, LFSL, Learning Focus School Leadership. Which is, which ang purpose talaga namin is to create high-performing learners through teachers who are committed and competent. Uh, and there are four big things that the school leaders or the, the leaders for learning should pay attention to. Una, we should be very ano, visible and present in monitoring instructional activities in the school. Of course, under the new normal, bago rin yung role natin. But what we will perhaps monitor is Maayos ba yung mga learning activities na ready? Maka-quality assure natin? Uh, na, nabigyan ba yung mga bata ng angkop na support, etc. Maintaining presence. Pangalawa, we should foster teachers' professional development. A, leader, a school leader who is focused in learning will always make sure that our fellow teachers are given updated professional development activities. Pangatlo, there are many sub, ano dyan, basahin yun lang pag na-receive niyo yung PowerPoint. Providing technical assistance so that if in, innovative teaching learning activities may be organized by our fellow teachers. And finally, actually sa research namin, ito yung pinakagrabi ang impact. Yung when you exemplify good leadership behavior. At kung sinabi mong exemplifying good leadership behavior, it's essentially, actually, uh, being consultative, hindi yung para kang Hitler, uh, hindi kayong utos ng utos, but nakikinig ka sa wisdom ng iyong mga fellow teachers. Yun ang napag-alaman namin sa Calabarzon, and I'm sharing this as I've said uh, with everybody else who wants to have some idea on how to be more uh, effective and attentive to learning as school officials. Finally, uh, ang idea ang isi-share ko sa inyo is my own synthesis or summary of the characteristics or of the traits of my ideal leader. Friends, I'm not yet this person. Pero sang-ayon sa aking pagbabasa, when I was work, you know, on my way to this job, nag-aaral tayo, master's, PhD, I was reading the literature on leadership because that's the field I was um, researching on. And I realized, pagkatapos kong magbasa ng magbasa, kung ano yung mga, mga characteristics na dapat nandyan sa leader, I created my own acronym. And I call it, my ideal leader is a prince. The prince is not the prince of Machiavelli. Yung mga nag-aral kay Machiavelli, iba yun, mapagsamantala. Ano. That's not my prince. My ideal leader is proactive. And to me, you are proactive when you do not wait for people to tell you what to do. You, you are not a leader if you just wait or wait for others to tell you what to do. You are a leader when you actually um, explore things just like what Mam Diling is doing, has done. Uh, di ba nung nagkaroon na ng lockdown, sabi ni Ma'am Diling, let's make sure that the closing of the school year will be will not be, you know, chaotic. So, nagay tayo ng bagong formula in computing. It's a proactive intervention. Pangalawa, results orientation. Being results oriented, to me, is being clear about the goals, the things that you want to accomplish. Of course, if you don't know what you want to accomplish, you will not go anywhere. Pangatlo, intelligence. The I in my prince is not the high IQ. Kasi actually, marami tayong kakilala, very high ang IQ, pero hindi naman effective na leader, di ba? So when we say intelligent, I am more referring to the emotional quotient, the emotional intelligence uh, that our other scientists are saying. In fact, sa kay Howard Gardner, Two intelligences sa akin, ano, ang intelligence for a leader that's very important to me is being self-smart. When you know ourselves, when we know ourselves, we become more authentic as a human being. The other intelligence for, for me that is also important that a leader should have is being people smart. Kilala mo yung iba. You can work harmoniously with others. Naiintindihan mo na hindi lahat ng tao katulad mong magaling or mabilis mag-isip. Naintindihan mo na ang 
lahat ng tao magkakaiba-iba kung kung kumilos at gumalaw. So you make adjustments on your expectations of others. To me, that is intelligence. The end is very simple. Of course, in depth ed, master natin yan. You can never accomplish things on your own. You're not a leader if you just accomplish things on your own. You have to work with a team. The more people there are in your network, the better it is for you in terms of, you know, orchestrating and uh, coming up with all the resources you need. Itong COVID-19 na ito, asahan nyo fellow teachers and fellow school officials, hindi lahat ng resources magbibigay ng NetEd. As usual, aasas tayo sa suporta ng local government officials, ng PTA, at lahat-lahat. Kung leader ka na lahat may naakoy ng mga partners, you will not have sources of additional things you need for your own organization. If you ask me, yung C, dyan sa Prince, is most important. Credibility. You, di pwede yung, sa sinasabi mo, um, ito ang gagawin, tapos iba naman yung nakikita sa yung ginagawa mo. Or sinasabi mo, ayaw ko nang namumurakot, pero obvious na obvious, kung ano-anong kakurakutan ang mga pinagagagawa mo. You are not credible. The leader, to me, kung tatanungin nyo ako, alam dyan sa anim na yun yung most important sa iyo. All of them are important, but the, to me, very critical yung being credible. Meaning, you walk your talk, you, you, when you say things, um, people will say, ah, totoo yan, naniniwala ako yan. And finally, importante rin sa isang leaders, sabi ko nga, I'm not yet this person, but these are the things that guide me whenever I make decisions or I do certain things, I try to be, yung pang-anim is empowering. When you are empowering as a leader, friends, you do not keep and hold on to power. You allow others to also experience how it is to experience power. So, palagi kong sinasabi, oh, yung mga nakikinig dyan, ang mga principal na ngayon, or mga super, I mean, yung, alam ko, si SDS Jerry, uh, very empowering yan. Um, your first job when you become a principal is to look for the next principal when you leave the school, within that school. Develop, sabi ko niyan, at develop at least two people in your team. Empower them. Teach them how to become better leaders, better than you actually are now. If you are able to do that, then you are empowering. Yung hindi sakim sa kapangyarihan in, in other words. Of course, alam kilala nyo yan when we were in Calab I was in Calabarzon, I was also claiming that there should be a, a push for transparency, ethics, and accountability in governance. I always insist that everything that the official has to do is transparent, ethical, and accountable in certain ways. That's to me um, a requirement for one to be an effective leader, particularly in this COVID-19 times. So friends, this is my last slide. Sabi nila, kami, curriculum and instructions run, CI. At mayroon pa kami isang meaning sa CI. And we should not forget, children are most important. Thank you very much and mabuhay. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yusek, for sharing your expertise and most especially for inspiring us this morning on the learning continuity plan as well as your sharing on how is it or how do we envision us becoming leaders, school leaders, and even our our teachers know that all of us has this actually qualities of becoming a good leader. So at this point po, Yusek, we shall ask some questions uh, which are there in our main teacher from our audience. So first question po, diretsaka mo po tayo, what will be our standard in online assessment? Uh, actually, yun yung inaano natin na uh, mag appeal tayo sa parents to to be very, ano, there should be an honor code. But uh, yung detalye, initial detail ng mga pinag-uusapan namin sa assessment, kung pang-distance learning, sana naman before the end of the school year, mayroon ng panahon na si teacher at ang bata ay magkita because we still really feel that the summative assessments particularly should be done on a face-to-face -face mode. 
So pag distance, um, siguro yun na nga, we, we require resort to portfolios other than the usual multiple choice test. We, we ano, halimbawa kung maganda nga, we, ito kung may mga facilities lang, kung may access sa videos, uh, ipaliwanag ng bata yung konsepto na inaaral niya uh, through a video. So, um, it, or pwede silang magtanong si teacher sa kasi bata video conference, tinatanong niya tungkol sa mga inaaral direct, directly. Ano. That's an option that can be done. Again, only for those with access to the the, the internet. Wala. Written, written, ano yata, written portfolios um, will also do. But yun na nga, ang ano lang natin dyan is we will pray and hope very hard that the parents and the learners will observe the so-called ano, honor. Okay, thank you po, Yusek. Meron naman pong question about MILKS po. Siya po ay isang senior high school teacher, Yusek. So ang question niya, recently po, meron ng junior high school level ng MILKS. Uh, do we have a senior high school milk book for the four subjects? At saka yes. okay, but now to available. Ah, uh, actually, um, may may draft na available. Pero yung gusto namin kasi is share may code. Ah, uh, the coding is still being done. Uh, we hope to be finished doing the codes um this week. Uh, but ang um, I made this announcement also that uh, yung TVL track. If we could not produce milk because the learning competencies we have listed in our curriculum guide are anchored on the training regulations of the test. So we cannot just say, aalisin natin ito because otherwise, ano. So, yung sa TVL po, uh, we will use the old um, learning competencies we have identified in our curriculum guides. So that will be available hopefully. Uh, siguro, para lang hindi nyo ako awayin, uh, by Monday next week, makikita nyo na sa LR portal. Sige po. Eh, uh, maraming salamat yun. Kasi kami din po sa Tech O'Clock, nagpo-post din po kami if mayroong mga bago po dun sa ating LR portal. Like kagabi yes. po, no, alas 8 ng gabi. Nag-abang po kami at lumabas nga dun sa LR portal. Ano, so, uh, si kami na pong dinistribute yan. So, Kaling nyo, Mary. Uh, I salute you. Um, Actually, pinood ko rin sa Facebook ko para lang yung mga nag-aabang alam na nila na ano. Oo nga, na, mga abangers sa milk. Okay po, meron pa pong question, Yusek. Are the milks this time will be the basis of examination contents? Most likely. Kasi uh, wag nyo namang gamitin yung lumang test. Eh, baka hindi na-cover. So, uh, I, to be very safe, um, Kung ano yung nandun sa milk, yun na yata. But sabi ko nga kanina, you can even enhance, you can add, you know, uh, competencies or come up with more detailed objectives sa mga lessons, etc. But uh, you may, pag, ang sigurado lang, pag yun nat na, kung mag, na nat na tayo, allowed na yun, milk ang basis mo. Oo. So, ayan. Thanks po from music, ha? Milk po ang gamitin natin sa exam. Huwag po yung nakaraan. So, hindi talaga yan masasagutan. <laughs> okay. Okay, may question po si Teacher Edgardo. Ito naman po ay about sa equipment. So, si Teacher Edgardo po nagtatanong, Yusek, there's a lot of rumors, quote-unquote, rumors in Facebook about giving of laptop to all teachers to daw for instructions during pandemic. Yusek, totoo po ba ito or fake news? <laughs> uh, nasa, plano, nasa master plan naman talaga yun ng DepEd sa office ni Yusek Alain. Pero uh, as to how fast we are able, we would be able to do this, that's really, uh, that's an issue. Kasi you know, may mga procurement protocols, etc. And then, hindi naman siya, sinabi lang na if we have to do that, 27 billion yata ang budget. So, um, hindi ko, personally, hindi ko alam yung kung available na yung pera or hahanapin pa. But that's part of the priorities that Ed has been able to identify. At ang, actually, kahit sa ano natin, Brigada Escuela, we are, we are encouraging our ever reliable partners to help us produce uh, resources, mga gadgets for the learners, and even for the teachers. I know, kahit yata sa CDO, uh, I'm not very sure with your SEF, but I know of certain areas na nakaka-afford 
bumili ng uh, tablets for teachers or ano mga smart TVs sa mga silid aralan mga things like this na naa-afford nila but uh, I'm not very sure in your own area pero mukhang ano naman kayo uh, will resource naman ang CTO Okay po. So we have uh, another question po. So this is about naman learning modality on homeschooling. So si Teacher Dan po, you check my question. Si Teacher Dan po, in case, in case po daw yung mga parents niya sa kanyang school ay magsasabi na they will go for homeschooling. Are there materials to be used by the parents who would like to explore homeschooling na galing po si DepEd para sigurado? Ano yun? Uh, if ever, uh, kasi gusto hopefully malalabas natin bago magbukas yung final guideline. Kasi ang existing guideline natin, clear naman, but essentially we allow homeschooling in private schools. Ang ako personally, ang gusto ko, subukin na rin sa public. So baka bawat division, isang elementary, isang junior high, isang senior senior high ang i-allow natin mag-homeschool. Ang gagamitin yung self-learning modules na ginagawa natin. And then, but ang... Um, we will always be very flexible kasi personally, I really am uh, not very comfortable giving all the prescriptions. Kahit mga doktor ang marami sa DepEd, I do not like to really be prescribing. So, ang sinasabi ko, what we will offer are the minimum. But the parents will actually be given also authority to add um, additional re learning resources uh, kung gusto nilang mas maraming nalalaman ng mga anak nila. So, what we, dun sa mga slide na binigay ko, is what we really make available are the the basics, yung minimum. It can always be enhanced or, um, yeah, contextualized uh, in the area. Okay. Thank you, Yusek. Ito naman po, I, I think, um, ito ay nasabi nyo na regarding DLL, di ba? So, sabi nyo, wag mo na yung DLL, grabe, parang daily naman. So, baka pwedeng weekly kasi naman tayo everyday na face-to-face. -face. Pero si teacher po, a senior high school teacher po, may, may question ng book regarding DLL. So, is it rigidly, rigidly indicated po daw in the DLL? Because ano yan? Um, dapat po ba daw sa DLL, naka-indicate po ang um, oral kasi siya ay isang, I think siya ay isang English teacher, no? So sa DLL po ba daw, dapat po ba daw na naka-indicate kung saan yon sa MELS? Kaya nga, ano, yung lalabas natin may, may para madali rin mahanap. Kung kasi we are also not going to prohibit the our fellow teachers, lalo na yung matagal na nagtuturo ng mga subject. Usually, di ba, yung mga previous DLL mo, gag i-enhance mo for this year. So, that's still okay. Pero yun nga, check mo yung, yung mga competencies na kinocover mo, i-cover mo ngayong taon, are still found in the MELS. But as I've said, safety to sa TPL, pero sa ibang learning areas, um, medyo, ano, may ilang uh, Okay po. So ito naman, Yusef, question from a grade 11 teacher. no? May grade 11 teacher po tayo. If only core subjects will be offered for the first semester, will there be a change in the harmonization of senior high school subject offers per track or per strand? Um, ano yan? Kayo na ang mag-decide. Actually, uh, yung mga ganong detalye, uh, parang um, hindi na, ka, ako personally again as uh, in charge of curriculum and instruction, yung mga ganong detalye, kung, I mean, I will allow the schools and perhaps the division offices to ano, come up with their own strategies on how to uh, to decide kung ano mga learning areas or even the, the majors or mga, mga tracks and the specializations that they will offer. But uh, para lang sa mga senior high school, we also are about to release uh, a set of guidelines for work immersion. Kasi that is perhaps one of the questions na itatanong mamaya. Sasabihin ko na ngayon, so kung nandyan yan, wag mo na itanong, the work immersion guidelines will be updated. There would be uh, alternative ways of complying with the uh, work immersion and uh, practical research uh, requirements for senior high school learners. Pantayan nyo na lang ulit. Kung kailan lalabas. Very soon na yan. 
Ayan. Actually, yun po, sana yung follow-up question yung immersion. So, ang galing nyo naman yung set na, tele, na telepathy na, no? So, uh, do you have a question for ASDS? Yes, ah. Uh... Yusek, ang galing, really. In so short a time, you have practiced, practically covered the whole of learning delivery from na, na modalities, resources and support, instructional supervision, and ideal leadership. Uh, Yusek, here in Cagayan de Oro City, we have actually uh, refined our learning continuity plan with our school's division superintendent, who is really a prince, Dr. Jeremy Limbaco. I'm sure you'd agree. And then uh, we, we're having a struggle really on the kind of modality that we will be using for our SPED learners. Any tips, Yusik? Um, kasama yan, uh, ASDS Alice, kasama sa more challenging, palagi ko rin tong binibigyan din. I forgot to emphasize this kanina and thank you for uh, raising that point. Ang more challenging for us would be the, the learners with um, disabilities and uh, the early grades, yung kinder hanggang grade three. Kasi if we will do distance learning, ay talagang mahirap. Kasi uh, pag distance learning, ito mga, mga early grades na to and uh, the learners with disabilities will have a need for extra support. So kailangan talaga uh, matrain natin yung mga parents. So ang, ang tip talaga is when we look at capacitating the, the families or the communities, kailangan extra ang attention natin sa mga uh, learners with special needs and uh, the early grades, yung K to grade 3. Saka yung mga higher grades na struggling ang kanilang learn, uh, reading comprehension lahat. Ito yung mga, mga ano. Ang iniisip ko pa, other than, kasi nga, ideally, sana, and I, I'm not very sure of the situation in your area, Papayagan pa rin yung blended. I mean, there will still be days, one or two days a week, where the teacher can still meet the special the learners, uh, sa special education learners natin, at saka yung early grades. Kasi kailangan talaga yung input ni teacher. But if this is not possible, uh, again, sorry, but ang, ang nakikita ko, ang medyo mas madali yung may access sa online. Kasi, uh, the teacher can still personalize through a video call, hawak ng bata yung learning resources, sinusuportahan ng nanay o ng tatay o ng uh, knowledge support sa bahay. The teacher explains. And so it's still possible. Medyo personalized. But pero alam naman natin, hindi naman kailangan maghapon to. So eh, kakaunti lang hopefully yung mga learners na maa-assign sa mga teacher na kailangan extra support. So I think this also agree na yung early grades and uh, um, sped classes, fewer learners ang i-assign. Kasi mas personalized. So, mas madali kung may online option, pero ang challenge yung wala. So, kailangan talaga siguro na these are situations where, although alam ko naman yung mga teachers natin sa special education are very committed, yung occasional home visit. Mga ganon. I mean, is it quite, I don't know, but uh, this one can be done in certain areas, yung mga cities lalo na. Perhaps yung mga graduates of the College of Education and uh, mga teacher applicants who may want to volunteer and be given points application later in terms of relevant experience, volunteer to be providers of support for these special groups of learners, yung early grades and uh, the SPED learners. Palagay ko, ano, will be able to to somehow ano, minimize the challenge or at least lessen the challenge and make it easier for us to do things. I don't know, you can even add, but the, yun ang mga uh, naiisip kong ano, na, pero ako ang feeling ko may online option, hindi kasing hirap. Basta willing mag-cooperate si nanay o tatay o yung kuya o ate sa bahay. Thank you, thank you, Yusik. And if I may add, Yusik, the whole of Region 10 is tuning in right now. Really, oh, really, you. since yesterday, the, our, uh, the whole of our superintendents, assistant superintendents are tuning in your session right now. Thank you, thank you. Regards to everyone. Sige, Yusik, thank you very much.
And we are also saying our thank you to our regional director, Dr. Arturo Bibayukot, for allowing us to broadcast here in the regional office, making sure po you check that this session will be fluid and internet, the internet connection is very strong. Kasi po kayo ang aming speaker for this session. Maraming salamat. Yeah, 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 a very good regional director. I yes. highly admire the regional director. Regards to Director Art. Sige po. So again, um, Busek, maraming maraming po salamat. Any last few uh, wisdom po that you'd like to share with our um, viewers for, for Tech Up now? Fellow teachers and fellow school officials, I think it's obvious the new normal is going to be different. And this will also mean that we have to learn how to do things in different ways. And sabi nga na and I'm just echoing what the secretary has been saying. And based from my own experience as a member of the Deaf Ed family for the last 35 years, I know there are a lot more fellow teachers and school officials who are highly committed who would always find a way to make sure that learning is going to happen regardless of the kind of challenges we face. And together, I, as I would always say, we cannot deliver if we are just islands onto ourselves. So let us continue to collaborate, work together, open our channels, I mean, lines of communication so people can give us feedback. Ako, I nilagay ko dun yung email address ko. Papadala ko na, napadala ko na sa iyo, Mary, yung PowerPoint. So bahan na ka ng mamudmod para hindi na ako mag email sa mga participants. Uh, but what I'm saying is, uh, if we uh, listen to what the people on the ground are saying, yung mga official um, ng DepEd, and if we uh, also um, continue to uh, be open to mga possibilities. There is nothing as difficult as this COVID-19 emergency that we cannot confidently face uh, and eventually claim that we have succeeded in making sure that learning is going to happen uh, regardless of the challenges we face. So thank you very much. Regards po sa inyong lahat. Ingat po tayo. I think what's very important is habang walang vaccine, we should stick to the health protocols. Uh, yung mga we require na mask, alcohol, uh, fre frequent hand washing. Uh, wag natin kakalimutan. And, and make sure that all of us are healthy. Ano, eat healthy food and uh, remember to ano, take care of our health first and foremost. May tayong lahat. Salamat na muli. God bless. Maraming salamat, Yusef, for your time. So thank you so much. And do uh, you have a few words for Ma'am Alice before Yusef will go pa? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Yusef, and to our working regional director, R.D. Art Bayokot, and our superintendent, Dr. Cheremay Limbaco. And uh, we all believe that uh, the most important infrastructure is still the educated mind. So learning must continue even with the pandemic going on. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 thank you so much, ASDS yeah. Alice, for joining us. So bye-bye po. Maraming 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 pong salamat. Sige po. Thank you po. Thank you po, Ma'am Alice. Maraming salamat po. All right. Sana ba? Ah, Ma'am Ali, sorry, sorry po. Yes, Ma'am. Yes, Ma'am. You're still here. Ma'am, bye-bye po. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right. So, at this point, right, at this point, Jocelyn, we are done with our season two. Okay, season two of Dep Ed Tech O'Clock. So, before we leave, we will just like to share with you, ito na po yung iniintay nyo, no? Ma'am Jocelyn, I think ito na yung iniintay nila. Rate, okay? Rate today's session. Can you see it on screen? Rate today's session and claim your digital certificate. Kindly go to bit.ly slash LCP. Alright, go to bit.ly slash 
Ed LCP. So yan po ay gagawin nyo right after this session. So I think the the link is currently open now. This will only be open 12 hours. I am just waiting for some of my um, teammates to be on board as we go and say goodbye and thank you for all of you who joined us for 14, okay, 14 episodes of Tech O'Clock. All right, so for our last session of season two, we would like to share this insight with you, okay? So while waiting lang po sa aming mga teammates to be online and on board, all right, for this Last episode of Tech O'Clock for Season 2, we would like to share with you, okay, this quote. So, this quote is actually based dun din sa sinabi ni Yusek, no, kanina, na that we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. Okay? So again, kahit po itong COVID-19, feeling natin na wala na talaga itong katapusan, no? wala na talaga. But in this case po, no? in this case, we would learn from reflecting on our previous experiences. Alright po. So, again, may we request everyone to be on board. So, andito na po si Ma'am Jocelyn, of course, ang ating newest member ng ating um, Tech O'Clock family to do the to do the service of sign language. Then, on board, we have Ma'am Isa, and then we have also Sir Pat. Okay. So, kami po Kami po ang bumubuo. Actually, meron pa si Sir Alan. Hindi yata nakapag-online. Si Sir Alan. We also have Sir James to be on board with us. This is now the Tech O'Clock team saying thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us for, for 14 learning sessions with you. So season 2 na po. Watch out, okay? Watch out for season 3. Season 3 po will be airing June 8. Okay? We'll see each other June 8 for our season 3 of Tech O'Clock. So everyone, let's do the Tech O'Clock thing. If it's 10 o'clock, okay? If it's 10 o'clock, it's Tech O'Clock. Goodbye. Bye everyone. See you po June 8. See you po, June 8th. Bye-bye po. See you June 8th. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, 14 solid episodes. Marami, marami pong salamat. Bye-bye po. Bye-bye. See you June 8th. See you June 8th. Bye-bye po. See